What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Son of a Tech once again. Blindrod is spelled B-L-I-N-D-R-U-N. You can check me out in my live stream where I play some video games over at twitch.tv slash sonofatech underscore if you want to ask how I came up with that name because it's my gamer alias. That aside, today we're going to talk about how to test your server power supply. Specifically, we're going to talk about server power supplies with breakout boards for both ASIC and GPU miners. I picked them up off of Parallel Miner, which I'll leave my affiliate link to in the description below. And yes, this is a re-record because I made one fatal mistake and basically we have to own up to it and get the proper information out to y'all as fast as possible. So stick around. Welcome back. So how did I end up in this position? Well, I recently purchased an Antminer D3. Well, I didn't purchase it. A kind enough viewer decided to send it over to me and this was just due to the fact that they've decreased in profitability. He has a whole bunch of them and I wanted to test out some other things such as some special firmware and possible other algorithm options for these miners in hopes to bring their profitability somewhat back up. That being said, when I got it all in, I went out and got a couple of power supplies and the breakout boards for them. I have a single Super Micro, which is 1100 watt power supply, the one in question, and then a single Dell 750 watt power supply. And then I just split the power accordingly. Basically, the way I did it was hook up two boards to the Super Micro and one board up to the Dell and then of course the control module up to the Dell and the Dell's reading at about 12.4 on the LCD screen. Now when I got it all set up and headed into the GUI or the web GUI for these ant miners I noticed that I wasn't getting power to one of the cards. To troubleshoot this I went ahead and swapped the ribbons and just move slots back and forth. And the problem didn't move with the ribbon, but it did move with the card itself. So I decided that possibly we might have some power issues. And before I went any further, I wanted to test it. And testing is not that hard. We'll talk about how to do it right now. Because I already have the B-roll, I'm just gonna try to talk you guys through this as best as I can. What you're going to want to do is hook up the power supply with the breakout board and the power supply won't turn on without the breakout board so make sure you have that available and there's a little power button on the breakout board. Pushing that will turn it on and even though nothing's plugged in you're still going to get power to all of the 6 pin PCIe adapters and this is what we're going to be testing. The next thing you're going to need to get is going to be a multimeter. I'll leave a link an Amazon link in the description below for you guys to go pick one up and we're going to want to turn it to DC or direct current. If you take a look at the breakout board or one of the six pins on the breakout board, the opposing corners are the ones you're going to want to be testing and if you're looking with the tab facing towards you, the top left and the bottom right will be the ones you want to use. The top left will be the red or the positive and the bottom right will be the negative or the black. Keep in mind here that if it's showing a negative 12 volts or a negative 12 reading then you're going to want to just swap those around to get the proper reading coming out of it. So it's pretty much as simple as that. You're going to plug them in and take a look at what the reading is on the power supply. Now this is where my fatal flaw was because I have a background in uh, auto Technically, yes, you still have a variance, but with a car, for example, you need quite a bit more than the 11.9 that I was seeing here. And that's a little different with this in particular. There is a tolerance and you can read it on the power supply and I did not read. So I apologize. The tolerance is plus or minus 5%. The plus or minus 5% is going to essentially come out to between on a 12 volt rail between 11.4 volts and 12.6 volts. So anywhere in between there is going to be okay. However, the closer you get to 11.4, the worse. And if you go over 12.6, well, that would be really bad because then you're probably going to break a part that you have. Yeah, I would be very, very careful if that's the case because you've probably already busted something and you probably need to go check out that component after you've determined that. This will also work on other power supplies if you're trying to check a 24 pin to the motherboard or an 8 CPU or even just another PCI by 6 or by 8. 
you can check these leads, of course, making sure the power supply supplies enough power. Other things you want to check is going to be the wall socket and make sure that there's enough power actually coming out of the wall socket, as well as any other uh, PDUs or anything else that you have connected to that uh, in addition. So anything down that line or that chain of power is something you're going to want to test. In this case, when we did test, we did find that the power supply was at about 12 volts. To me, that feels a little bit low. That's without any load on it. Now, once plugged up to the Antminer D3 with the two cards plugged in, they started dropping below 12 volts and it was hitting around 11.9. The only thing that worries me here is as it's been running, it has dropped a little bit more, but it hasn't actually gone below the spec or without or out of spec. The other thing to keep into note here is the amps do play a factor and there's some additional testing you probably do want to do, but this is going to be how you can do a hard, fast, uh, within spec test on any of the power supplies that you currently have uh, either running your ASICs or your GPU rigs. So if you're having a particular problem, make sure you check the power or the voltage coming out of the six pins because what the problem is with the parallel minor breakout boards is the rep as talking to me said that they do not or are not always accurate. So that means that even if it is showing within spec you want to test it or if you suspect it and it's showing out of spec you still want to test it and make sure that that's actually the issue hope this clears some things up and you guys enjoyed the video and now that you have a better understanding thanks to the comment earlier i have a better understanding so i do this to learn and of course learn with y'all and alongside y'all so hopefully We'll just get better and better at what we do here. And I hope you guys will stick around. Hit the sub, hit the like, check me out on Twitter at Son of Attack. Come hang out on our Discord, and I will see you next Tuesday.